she's always perfunctory in her duty, slick and deceitful. No one was rushing me, so I just performed routine duties. As long as I wasn't idle and finished some drawings, it was fine. She doesn't repent or change even after being pruned and dealt with. Ultimately, she's dismissed and self-reflects. But I didn't understand. At first, I wanted to do a good job. So why had I turned out to do my duty that way? What was the reason for that? What does she learn about the nature and consequences of being slick and deceitful in her duty? What changes does she make? In 2020, I was doing design work in the church, mainly drafting. After a while, I realized that drafting was slower paced than other work. My supervisor was overseeing other work too, so she wasn't keeping close track of ours. I started slacking off. No one was rushing me, so I just performed routine duties. As long as I wasn't idle and finished some drawings, that was fine. Anyway, it was pretty light work. I didn't need to rush it or physically suffer at all. I was the main force on our team. I was familiar with all the principles and the work. So I thought I was sure to be kept in that duty, and I'd be saved in the end. With that kind of perspective, I didn't have any daily goals or plans in my duty. I did as much as I could and was fine with that. I didn't ever seem idle, but I was perfectly relaxed. When I was drawing, I had a hard time focusing. When messages popped up in my chatting app, I immediately checked them. I responded and handled things regardless of the importance. I'd fritter away my time without realizing it. Some mornings we gathered, and if I used my time well, I could finish three drawings that day but I'd feel complacent after finishing the first one. I thought, since the morning gathering had already taken up half the day, doing two drawings was enough. So I'd drag my feet and only end up finishing two drawings. Not only that, but I'd use my spare time to watch the news. I didn't think about my life entry. I didn't consider what problems there might be in my duty. During that time, all I did was toil in my duty. I didn't read God's words to self-reflect. I showed corruption but didn't seek the truth to resolve it. I figured I didn't have any particular difficulties in my work, and I'd completed a lot of designs, so I was doing all right in my duty. That's a dangerous state to be in. Problems are likely to crop up that way. Yeah, yeah that's what happened. The workload just kept increasing. But our pace of drawing was too slow, causing delays. There was one design that was actually held up for a whole month. And when the supervisor found out about it and looked into our daily work output, she realized how low our productivity was. She harshly dealt with us for being lazy and negligent. We had no sense of urgency, even seeing the work backed up, and no one reported it. We didn't shoulder a burden and dragged our feet in our duty. And that was being a hindrance to the gospel work. I was taken aback to hear that. I generally felt like I stayed pretty busy and got a lot done. So why was it so little when calculated? Didn't that make me a parasite leeching off of the church? I'd be dismissed and cast out if that continued. After that, under the supervisor's oversight, my efficiency and my duty improved somewhat. But seeing all the designs that were pending made me anxious. In particular, the supervisor was following up more closely on work. Sometimes she would ask questions about details and look into where we struggled. When she noticed us meddling through again, she used a much harsher tone with us. I felt very annoyed with that. 
These things are easier said than done, and I felt she was asking too much. She thought doing those designs was easy? I was already working hard. Did she think I was superhuman? I was in a resistant state, so I wasn't willing to suffer anymore or pay a price. My efforts to hurry up were just for the supervisor to see. If I was too slow, I'd be dealt with. I felt like I was being dragged along every day, and I was super tired. I'd often fantasize about how great it would be if I could get all the drawings done in an instant. And I even envied other sisters, thinking their duties were so relaxing. They were not like mine, with endless designs to do. It was boring and tiring. I'd be dealt with if I was slow. I thought the assignment was no good. Since I wasn't in the right state, for a while I was constantly sleepy. I was able to get plenty of sleep at night, but during the days I was always half asleep. I had to muster up my energy to work on designs. When your situation got bad enough, did you reflect on yourself? No. I had some awareness at the time, but I didn't seek the truth to resolve it. After that, I noticed the sisters I worked with had some issues in their work. One didn't understand the principles, and her nitpicking over small issues was holding up our progress. The other one was always just muddling through. But I just casually pointed these things out, and then never followed up. And I hadn't told our leader about it. Our team leader discovered the issues and handled them. But our work had already been held up. One day, the leader sought me out and said, You're being careless, slick, deceitful, and irresponsible in your duty. You only make an effort when someone pushes you. You're not truly expending for God. Based on your behavior, you're dismissed from your post. But if you're willing, you can do design work part-time. We'll take you back in the future if you really show signs of repentance. The leader really exposed me and I was speechless. He was right. That's how I had been doing my duty. But that situation felt so sudden to me. I couldn't accept that reality right away. I acknowledged that I had been causing delays to our work. And also, I had done actual harm. I was really miserable and full of regret. I felt God's righteous disposition tolerates no offense. That's right. When God looks at someone, He doesn't look out for how well they appear to behave. He looks at their attitude toward the truth and their duty. But I'd had a really lax attitude toward my duty, muddling through, dragging my feet, and I had to be pushed by others. I didn't make a change after I was dealt with, and I disgusted God. Being dismissed was God's chastening and discipline. I just had myself to blame, reaping what I'd sowed. I felt ready to submit and reflect on myself and repent to make up for my transgressions. Mm. Mm. But I couldn't understand. At first, I really wanted to do a good job. So why had I turned out to do my duty that way? What was the real reason for that? I prayed to God in my confusion, asking Him to enlighten me to understand my issue. Amen. Once in my devotionals, I read God's words. In fact, if you did your duty responsibly, you wouldn't need five or six years to be able to share your experiences and bear witness to God, and the various church work would be carried out to great effect. But you're not willing to be mindful of God's will, nor do you strive for the truth. There are some things you can't yet do, therefore I give you exact instructions. You needn't think. Just listen and do it. That's the little responsibility you have to shoulder. 
But even that is beyond you. Where is your loyalty? It is nowhere to be seen. All you do is say pleasant sounding things. In your hearts, you know what you should do, but you simply do not practice the truth. This is rebellion against God. And at root, it is a lack of love for the truth. You know well in your hearts how to act in line with the truth. You just don't practice it. This is a serious problem. You stare at the truth without practicing it. You are not someone who obeys God at all. To perform a duty in the house of God, you must at least seek and practice the truth and act based on the principles. If you cannot practice the truth while performing your duty, then where will you be able to practice it? And if you do not practice any of the truth, then you are a non-believer. What is your purpose, really, if you don't accept the truth, much less practice the truth, and just muddle along in God's house? Do you wish to make God's house your retirement home or an almshouse? If so, you are mistaken. God's house does not take care of freeloaders, of wastrels. Anyone of poor humanity who does not perform their duty gladly, who is unfit to perform a duty, must all be removed. Non-believers who don't accept the truth at all must be cast out. Some people know the truth, but don't practice it while performing their duties. When they see a problem, they do not solve it. And they know their responsibilities, but don't give it their all. If you don't fulfill responsibilities you're able to, then what value or effect could performing your duty possibly have? Is believing in God like this meaningful? One who knows the truth but can't practice it, who can't bear the hardships they should, such a person is unfit to perform a duty. Some perform duties with the sole intention of being fed. They are beggars. They think they'll have room and board by doing a few tasks in God's house, that they will be provided for without needing to get a job. Does such a bargain exist? God's house does not provide for loafers. If someone who doesn't practice the truth at all, who's always careless and perfunctory in their duty, says they believe in God, will God acknowledge them? All such people are non-believers and, as God sees them, evildoers. Amen. 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 God's words are always very clear. If you're always perfunctory in your duty and never repent, you're a parasite in God's house who he won't acknowledge. Right. Yeah. Thinking over God's words, I felt like he was revealing me precisely to my face. He described exactly how I did my duty. I thought back over things that had happened. When I saw the supervisor not following up on work much, I started being sly and cunning, exploiting this. I didn't look idle, but didn't get much done. In my free time, I didn't think about what issues there were in my duty, or even the issues in my life entry. But I'd watch the news out of curiosity. There was nothing proper in my heart. I was totally unaware I was delaying our work. Though I improved my efficiency slightly after being dealt with by our supervisor, I only forced myself to make the effort so I wouldn't be dismissed. I was resistant and resentful of her supervision. I was even getting annoyed by doing my duty. I felt like it was a thankless and difficult job. One of the sisters I was working with was muddling through and holding up work, but I decided to turn a blind eye. I saw I wasn't being sincere with my duty. I wasn't practicing the truth or considering God's will. I only cared about my relaxation. I was a parasite looking for a free meal from the church. I had no conscience or reason. The way I was behaving was just like those non-believers who just care about eating their fill and gaining blessings. I wasn't doing my duty that way because I didn't understand the job or have the right skills. I was lacking humanity and didn't pursue the truth. I was also coveting comforts of the flesh. I wasn't worthy of doing a duty in the church at all. 
When I reflected, I read some of God's words. Hmm. Almighty God says, All God's chosen people are now practicing, performing their duties. And God makes use of people's performance of their duties to perfect one group of people and cast another out. So it is the performance of duty that reveals each sort of person. And each sort of deceiver, non-believer, and evil person is revealed and cast out in the performance of their duty. Those who perform their duty faithfully are honest people. Those who are consistently careless and perfunctory are deceitful, shrewd people and they are non-believers. And those who cause disruptions and disturbance in performing their duties are evil people, and they are antichrists. All people are revealed in performing their duties. Just set a person to a duty, and it will not take long before it is revealed whether they are an honest person or a deceiver and whether or not they are a lover of the truth. Those who love the truth can perform their duties sincerely and can uphold the work of God's house. Those who do not love the truth do not uphold the work of God's house in the least, and they are irresponsible in performing their duties. This is visible to those with eyes to see. No one who performs their duty poorly is a lover of the truth or an honest person. They are all targets of revelation and being cast out. To perform their duty well, people must have a sense of responsibility and a sense of burden. In this way, there is no question the work will be done properly. If, forbid, someone did not have a sense of burden or responsibility, and had to be prompted to do everything, and was always slapdash and perfunctory, and when problems arose, they tried to shift the blame, leading to the problems being drawn out and going unresolved, could the work still be done well then? Could such performance of duty yield an effect? They would not wish to do any of the tasks that are arranged for them, and would not concern themselves when they see others who need help with their work. They would do a bit of work only when ordered, only when push came to shove and they had no choice. This would not be their performing their duty. This would be hired labor. Hired labor works for an employer, doing a day's work for a day's pay, an hour's work for an hour's pay. They're waiting to get paid. They're afraid of doing any work the boss doesn't see. They are afraid of not being rewarded for anything they do. They only ever work for appearance's sake, which means they have no loyalty. To believe in God is to walk the right path in life, and one must pursue the truth. This is a matter of the spirit and of life, and it is a different thing from unbelievers' pursuit of wealth and glory of making an eternal name for themselves. These are separate roads. In their jobs, unbelievers think about how they can do less work and make more money, of the dubious tricks they could play to earn more. They think all day long about how to get rich and make their family's fortune and they even come up with unscrupulous means to achieve their goal. This is the path of evil, the path of Satan, and it is the path 
that unbelievers walk. The path walked by believers in God is that of pursuing the truth and gaining life. It is the path of following God and gaining the truth. Amen. Amen. I saw from God's words that unbelievers working is nothing but a transaction. It's for money and their self-interest. They even wish to make money for doing nothing at all. When their work is inspected, they put on an act and do some work, but without that, they're slippery and deceitful. They never seem to be anxious, no matter what state their work is in. All they really care about is their money. Yeah. I realized I was exactly the same. When there wasn't any pressure in my duty, when I didn't have to suffer, I felt like that duty wasn't bad. As long as I wasn't idle and completed tasks, I wouldn't be cast out, and I'd be qualified to stay in the church, and I'd be saved in the end, killing two birds with one stone. I didn't look particularly lazy, and others didn't see any problems. But I wasn't putting my everything in. I was fine with just a little work. The rest of the time, I looked over some inconsequential information, perusing unimportant stuff to find out novel things. I was constantly dawdling. It was no different from an unbeliever working for a boss. The moment our work was delayed, I acted like it was no big deal and had no sense of urgency. When I was dealt with and exposed, I put a bit more effort in to save some face and not get dismissed. But when the standards were raised, I was resistant and complained and wanted to switch to a more relaxing duty. It looked like I was doing my duty, but I was just completing a task for my supervisor to see. I wasn't being sincere with God or my duty. I wanted to pay a small price for the blessings of the kingdom of heaven. That was trying to conduct a transaction with God. I never thought that after all those years of duty, I'd be exposed to such a slippery, deceitful person. I'd enjoyed everything God had given me and the sustenance of His words. But all I did was seek ease and comfort in my duty, doing whatever kept me from suffering, without considering the Church's work or caring for God's urgent will. I had no reverence for God. How was that doing a duty? I was clearly delaying the Church's work, and I was an opportunist freeloading off of the Church. When I reflected, I realized I was being very selfish because I'd been upholding satanic philosophies. Like every man for himself. And life is short. Enjoy it while you can. All these things had become my very life. Living by these things, I just considered my own fleshly interests. I felt like in our lives we must be kind to ourselves, that exhausting ourselves and working too hard isn't worth it. Being free and easy is great. Worrying and getting worn out is not. I always had that attitude in my duty being perfunctory and sluggish, which caused delays in the Church's work, ruining my own character. I was a believer but didn't practice God's words, instead living according to Satan's fallacies, becoming increasingly selfish, crafty, and depraved. I had no character or dignity, not worthy of trust. Even for an unbeliever at work, if they approach things with that opportunistic mentality, maybe they could get away with it for a bit. But after a while, others would see through them. Yeah. True. And what's more, I was doing a duty in the house of God, right in front of God who can see through people. I was playing dishonest games and tricks, and though I wasn't found out for a while, God could see everything perfectly clearly. 
he saw that I wasn't truly expending myself for him, but was just getting by. At that point, I realized, no wonder I was always feeling sleepy and listless at work and not feeling God's presence. It was because I was being slick and deceitful, which was disgusting to God. He'd long since hidden his face from me. I became very numb without the work of the Holy Spirit. I couldn't do a good job. All my experience didn't really matter. That's true. God's disposition won't tolerate any offense. I tend to slack off, and sometimes I could be cunning as well, but never paid much mind to it. I didn't think being a little lazy was committing evil. Now with your fellowship, I see the essence of being careless in a duty is something truly serious. It's true. Very true. Without sincerity in your duty, you won't be guided by God. Then you're bound to be exposed and cast out. Yeah. True. Later, I read more of God's words. The nature of being perfunctory in a duty became clear to me then, and I saw that God's disposition is inviolable. How you regard God's commissions is extremely important, and this is a very serious matter. If you cannot complete what God has entrusted to people, then you are not fit to live in His presence and you should also be punished. As ordained by heaven and earth, humans should complete God's commissions. This is their supreme responsibility. It matters just as much as their lives. If you do not take God's commissions seriously, then you are betraying Him in the most grievous way. You are more lamentable than Judas and should be cursed. People must fully understand how to view what God entrusts to them and at least understand that the commissions he entrusts are exaltations and special favors from God. They are most glorious things. Everything else can be abandoned. Even if one must give one's life, God's commission must be fulfilled. One time, I entrusted someone to do something. As I explained the task to him, he carefully recorded it in his notebook. I saw how careful he was in recording it. He seemed to feel the burden of the work and bear a responsible attitude. Having conveyed the job to him, I sat to waiting for an update. Two weeks went by and still no word back. So I decided to find him. I asked him how his task was coming along. He said, Oh no, I forgot about it. Tell me again what it was. How do you feel about the answer he gave? That was the sort of attitude he had when doing a job. I thought to myself, this person really is untrustworthy. Get away from me and make it quick. I don't want to see you again. That's how I was feeling. So, I am going to tell you a fact. You must never associate the words of God with the lies of a trickster. That's abominable to God. There are some who say they are as good as their word, that their word is their bond. If that's really the case, can they follow God's words as they hear them? Can they carry them out as carefully as they do their personal affairs? Every sentence that God speaks is truly important. He does not speak in jest. What He says, people must carry out and execute. When God speaks, is He consulting with people? He certainly is not. Is He asking you multiple choice questions? He certainly is not. If you can realize that God's words and commission are all commands that man must do as they say and carry them out, then you're responsible for carrying them out and executing them. If you think that God's words are nothing but a joke, nothing but casual remarks, that can be done or not however one likes, and you treat them as such, then you are quite without sense and unfit to be called a person. God will never speak a word to you again. If a person always makes choices in regards to God's requirements, His orders and His commission, and treats them with a desultory attitude, then they are a sort of person that God abhors.
In things I order and commission of you directly, if you always need me to supervise you, urge you on, to always worry and make inquiries, to check on you at every turn, then you ought to be cast out. Amen. 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 I was able to learn from God's words that anything He says, anything He demands, absolutely must be carried out and must be adhered to by a created being. Right. Yeah. If we don't take God's word seriously, but always need oversight and reminders in our work, or we just do a little when someone forces us, that is essentially deceiving and cheating God, which is disgusting to Him. People like this don't deserve to hear God's words or to stay in the church and should be cast out. Yeah. I felt really afraid when I thought of God's words, especially the part where he says, this person really is untrustworthy. Get away from me and quick. I don't want to see you again. I was regretful and guilty about all the evil I'd done in my duty and tears just kept running down my face. Looking back on my attitude toward my duty, it was just like what God exposed. It was very casual. This is a crucial period for the expansion of the kingdom gospel. Everyone is simply dying to perform a duty. But I was coveting my fleshly comforts, leisurely and perfunctory in my duty, content to do service without trying to be efficient, which impacted my work results. I was derelict in my duty, loafing around, just thinking of my contentment. The church entrusted me with such an important job, but I'd never taken it seriously before. I saw it as my bargaining chip so that I could live off of the church without paying a price at all or thinking of different ways I could improve my work. I was just doing the very bare minimum. No matter how slow the progress was and how urgent God's will was, I didn't care. I just cared about not wearing myself out. I was negligent and unmindful in my duty, just wanting to get by, dragging my feet when I could. God didn't have any place in my heart, and I didn't have any reverence for Him. Being so casual toward my duty made me even lowlier than a dog. Dogs are very loyal to their owners, whether they're near to their owners or not. They fulfill their responsibilities and watch over their owner's home. Based on the way I acted, I wasn't worthy of doing that duty. But God didn't treat me based on my transgressions. He gave me another chance to repent. That was God's incredible tolerance for me. That's yeah. true. I swore to myself that I would repent from then onward and make up for what I owed. Thank Amen. God. In my devotionals, I read a passage of God's words. It showed me how to do my duty in the future. Almighty God says, What did Noah think in his heart once God had issued his command to build an ark? He thought, From today onward, nothing matters as much as building the ark. Nothing is as important and urgent as this. I have heard the words from the Creator's heart. I have felt His urgent will, so I must not delay. I must build the ark that was spoken of and asked for by God with all haste. What was Noah's attitude? One of not daring to be neglectful. And in what manner did he bring the ark to fruition? Without delay. He carried out and brought to fruition each detail of what was spoken of and instructed by God with all haste and with all his energy, without being at all careless or perfunctory. In sum, Noah's attitude toward the Creator's command was obedience. He was not unconcerned with it, and there was no resistance in his heart 
nor was there indifference. Instead, he diligently tried to understand the will of the Creator as he recorded every detail. When he comprehended God's urgent will, he decided to pick up the pace, to complete what God had entrusted to him with all haste. What did this mean, with all haste? It meant completing, in as little time possible, work that would previously have taken a month, getting it done perhaps three or five days ahead of schedule, without dragging his feet at all or the least procrastination, but pushing ahead with the whole project as best he could. Naturally, while carrying out each job, he would try his hardest to minimize losses and errors, and not to do any work such that it would have to be repeated. He would also have completed every task and procedure on schedule and done them well, guaranteeing its quality. This was a true manifestation of not dragging one's feet. So what was the prerequisite for his being able not to drag his feet? He had heard God's command. Yes, that was the prerequisite and context for his achievement. Now, why was Noah able not to drag his feet? Some people say Noah was possessed of true obedience. So what did he possess that allowed him to achieve such true obedience? He was mindful of God's will. That's right. This is what it means to have heart. People with heart are able to be mindful of God's will. Those without heart are empty shells, buffoons. They do not know to be mindful of God's will. I don't care how urgent this is for God. I'll do what I want. In any case, I'm not being idle or lazy. This kind of attitude, this kind of negativity, the total lack of proactiveness, this is not someone who is mindful of God's will, nor do they understand how to be mindful of God's will. In which case, are they possessed of true faith? Definitely not. Noah was mindful of God's will. He had true faith and was thus able to complete God's commission. And so, it is not enough to simply accept God's commission and be willing to make some effort. You must also be mindful of God's will, give your all, and be devoted, which requires people to have a conscience and sense. It is what people ought to have and what was found in Noah. Amen. Amen. Thank God. By fellowshipping on Noah's experience, God provides us with a path for how to do our duties. Yeah. Right. Noah's experiences really motivated me. He was serious and responsible in his duty and really is worth emulating. Yeah. yeah, right. I saw from God's words that Noah gained God's approval because he possessed genuine faith in God and cared for his will. When he received God's commission, he made building the ark his priority. He didn't think about his physical suffering or how hard it would be. Way back then, in that pre-industrial age, building such a huge ark must have required lots of mental and physical effort, and he had to withstand others' mockery. But under these circumstances, Noah stayed strong for over a century to complete God's commission. With that, he finally comforted God's heart. Yeah. Noah truly expended for God and deserved God's trust. Amen. Right. But as for me, with no one pushing me and watching me, I exploited the chance to be lazy and sly to covet my comforts, dragging my feet in my work, 
never concerned about how I delayed things. I really had no humanity and didn't deserve God's salvation. Now I understood. Doing a duty should be like Noah building the ark. There needs to be real action. I must make every second count to forge ahead to work more efficiently. Even if no one's checking up on me, I need to be responsible and do everything that I can. Only then will I be considered someone with a conscience and humanity. Right. Yeah. God. Now I see that it is important to perform our duty with conscience. That's how we're considerate of God's will, and that's how we're devoted in our duty. That's yeah. right. Very true. After that, I started scheduling my time. When I wasn't doing design work, I spent time helping out with another duty. Also, I kept a close eye on my own state. My schedule was really full every day, but I felt really at peace. And this time, I was more invested in my duty. Thank God. Sometimes, when a job was just about done, and I had the urge to slack off again, or drafting was held up because I hadn't coordinated things, I wanted to indulge myself. Thinking that I wasn't considered a member of the team, and no one pushed me forward, plus I helped out with another job. So being slower on design work was justifiable. Thinking that, I realized that I wasn't in the correct state and rushed to seek the truth to resolve it. I read this in God's words. Doing a duty is, in fact, doing what man ought to. If you do it before God, if you do your duty and obey God with an attitude of honesty and with heart, will this attitude not be far more correct? So how should you apply this attitude to your everyday life? You must try to make these words, worshiping God with heart and honesty, your reality. Whenever you want to be slack and go through the motions, whenever you want to be lazy and act in a slippery way, whenever you want to enjoy yourself, you should think it through. In behaving like this, am I being untrustworthy? Is this putting my heart into doing my duty? Am I being disloyal by doing this? Am I not living up to the commission God has given me? This is how you should self-reflect. If you see that you're always careless and perfunctory in your duty, being disloyal and hurting God, what action should you take? You should say, In the moment, I thought there was something wrong happening here, but I didn't treat it as a problem. I just glossed it over carelessly. I didn't realize until now that I had been perfunctory, not being responsible. I'm lacking in conscience and reason. You've found the problem and come to know yourself a bit. Now you must turn around. Your attitude toward your duty was wrong. You were careless as with an extra job, and you did not put your heart into it. If you are this way again, you must pray to God and have him discipline and chasten you. One must have such a will in doing their duty. Only then can they truly repent. One turns around only when their conscience is clear and their attitude toward their duty is transformed. Amen. 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 Reading God's words gave me more clarity on a path of practice. A duty is a commission that's given to people by God. Even if no one supervises us, we should accept God's scrutiny and put our all into it. Always needing someone to push me to do a little was lacking devotion, and others found that disgraceful. I couldn't keep being that way, but I had to revere God and accept His scrutiny. I should be proactive without needing others to urge me on. Thank God. When my duties were hectic and I needed to pay a price, I arranged my schedule ahead of time and did my very best, trying not to muddle through. When I approached things that way, after a little while, I started to see some results in my duty. I had to put more into it than I did before, and I spent some energy. But I didn't feel tired at all. 
I felt calm and at peace. When I had difficulties in my duty, through seeking the truth, I made unexpected gains. I made progress in my technical skills, as well as my life entry. Thank God. Thank God. If we're honest in our work and take responsibility, we can gain God's guidance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's true. One day in June of 2021, the leader talked to me and let me know I was being reassigned to the team. I was so excited, I didn't even know what to say, and I gave my thanks to God. I also swore that this time I'd really treasure this opportunity and do my best to please God. Thank, Thank God. God. God's mercy for us is so great. Yeah. Right. That change to my duty showed me how selfish and vile I was, and I truly hated myself, and gained some reverence for God. Sometimes I still feel lazy, but then I say a prayer to God to watch over my heart and to expose and discipline me right away when I get perfunctory, sly, and cunning. Since putting that into practice, I've become a lot less deceitful and achieved better results in my duty. Thank, Thank God. God. When I use my time wisely and complete the tasks on hand, I go ask the team leader for more projects. It's a little bit more tiring, but I feel really fulfilled. Later, the leader told me that I was doing my job a lot better than before. I was really moved and motivated to hear that. I knew I still wasn't doing enough and I needed to do more. Right. Thank God for chastening me, which helped me change my attitude toward my duty. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God.